Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 834. And if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 831 to 834, click on the link below the video. Hey, we have a great video here with some super cool advanced tips. And here's what our goal is. We have, we need to make an average based on some two criteria, but we need to do it across sheets. And watch this, when we click on week one, we have one table. There's the product column. Week two, oh, there's another product column. Week three, and third, and finally a fourth. So how in the world, we need to ask our average uh, calculation to look through all four columns as if they were one column. Then we need to do the same thing here to get our second criteria. And finally, we need to do the same thing here to, to get our values to calculate our average. So again, the idea is how are we going to do this across multiple sheets? Well, I went ahead and uh, did it the brute force method and then posted at the Mr. Excel message board and got a couple other uh, methods. Now, the brute force method looks something like this. What? Uh, and I strung this all together, but let me show you down here. I had my criteria, and I did one sum if on each sheet. So here, this sum if right here, sum ifs with an S, the uh, that's the week one column with all of our sales numbers, the D column. And then uh, there's the column with the products. And here's the approximate criteria. We said, hey, th that one, but we joined it with an ampersand asterisk on either side. That gave us uh, not searching for wine, but anything that contains wine. And then finally, we did the C column, which had the store, right? And so I did some ifs for each one of these sheets. I added them up. And then I did a similar thing with count ifs. So now I can simply go equal sum divided by the sum of these. Now, the monster formula I just showed you up there. Uh, actually took each individual cell part and slammed it into a sum function, but there's our answer, right? Oh, that is just ridiculous here. So uh, Barry Houdini and Dominique gave some great solutions. Now, each one has uh, some advantages. Let's first look at uh, the one Barry Houdini posted. Now, here's the sheet name. So this solution is going to require that we put the sheet names in some cells. And the advantage to this one is that you, here's week one to week four. We could have 52 weeks and just put the sheets here, and this method would work. It's going to involve the indirect function. So I'm going to say start inside the formula. We'll eventually put it into some if and some product. But indirect, what does indirect do? Indirect takes a reference that's stored as text and turns it back into a reference. So we're going to create a reference. I'm first going to uh, double quote. And then notice there's two quotes right there. That's the double quote. And then I'm going to type a single quote and then a double quote. Why a single quote inside a double quote? Because sheet references have single quotes on the outside of them. And then I'm going to join that to these. And then each one of these would be an individual sheet references with an uh, a pos single apostrophe and then explanation. So I'm going to join that double quote, single apostrophe, and an explanation. Let's just look at what this is. This is text inside of here. But if I hit the F9 key, oh, so the single apostrophe all the way to the explanation point, that little piece right there, that is a sheet reference without the cell references, right? So I'm going to Control Z and undo that. Now, I need more here. I need three different ranges. And actually, I can put suspend this for a moment just to remind us. We're going to need the B column, which is B2 to B15 for our wine, C2 to C15 for our store, and C uh, D2 to D15 for our numbers. So I'll start with the numbers. Notice I put a space there, and it suspended it. I'm actually going to hard code this in because the ranges are in the exact same location on each sheet. So I'm going to type D2 colon D15. Now if I highlight this and hit the F9 key, you can see we have four columns. These are references stored as text. All right, now Control Z. Now what does indirect do? Indirect will take those and convert them back to references. So I'm going to hit the F9 key. Now the thing is, is if we evaluate this, it's only going to show us the first number in each one of those columns. All of those numbers 
will be in effect inside of the form, and we just can't see them here. I'm going to Control Z. I'm going to Control Shift Enter, and just let's go look. Okay, so 392, uh, 160. So at the f the first number in each one of these columns is showing up in our formula so far. All right. Now guess what? We're going to have to repeat this and then use it inside of a sum ifs. We're going to have to repeat it. Um, for each one of the columns we're interested in. But let's go ahead and do our sum ifs. Sum ifs is great because it, you can have a sum range, which that is what that is right there, comma, and then a criteria range. Now, I've just copied that indirect. I'm going to Control V. And guess what? All I have to do, since the sheet names are the same for each one, is I have to change the column. Now, in the B column is our products that have the wine, all right? That's criteria range one. Now I'm going to type a comma. And my criteria, I'm going to double quote, asterisk, double quote, ampersand. I've joined a wild card with whatever's in B1, ampersand, double quote, asterisk. And so now this will be uh, any string that contains wine. That's our criteria. So that's like an approximate match using wild cards. Comma, our Second criteria range is the store column. So I'm going to Control V, and I'm going to change the D right here to C. All right, so that's criteria range one. And then comma, criteria two, that's the store. All right, now what we've done is we've taken some sheet names from the cells, ampersand very cleverly to get all three columns mashed together. Now the sum ifs can do its job. If I highlight this and hit F9, oh, it's going to only show us exactly what we want. Is that not what we got down here? That is just amazing. Now I'm going to Control Z. And this has an array, this indirect argument right here, reference text. We put an array in here. So we're going to have to enter this with Control Shift Enter. Or since sum ifs, this thing, sum ifs, is actually delivering four different numbers. It's as if it's doing four different sum ifs, just as I, we did down here by hand, right? So we are going to have to add this. And we're going to have to use Control Shift Enter. You could just use the sum function and Control Shift Enter, but I'm going to use sum product. Because sum product, even though we slap this whole little sum ifs is just going to be considered a single array by using some product. It'll help us avoid Control Shift Enter. So I just hit Enter. $568. Now, that's not what we want, but that is the total. So now, guess what? We're going to have to do the same construction for the count if. So I'm going to copy this and division symbol and Control V. All right. so. I have an equal sign there. I see if I'm going to get rid of that. Now I'm going to change this sum to count. And count sum count if does count ifs does not need the range for adding because it's only counting. So I'm going to delete that very first indirect in that comma. That's it. That'll work. Control uh, control one hundred eighty nine dollars and thirty three cents. So that's, that's a pretty wild uh, use of indirect and uh, sheet references in cells to get our sum if and our sum product, and then our sum product and count if to calculate an average with two criteria, including a wild card across sheets. Now, the one thing about indirect is it is volatile. So every time something happens in the spreadsheet, it'll recalculate. And if these are gigantic columns, you know, that's a lot of recalculating, right? So there's another way. Don, Dominique cents. said in the post, um, you know, if there's only four sheets, this next method would work. If there's 52, then this one's going to get too unwieldy. But we will see how to use the choose function to mash four columns, not into a single column, but into a two-dimensional range. And we'll use the if function inside of average. So we're going to say, Let's look at the choose first. Choose is a lookup function. Now, usually you give it an index number like 1, 2, 3, 4, and then it chooses between four values. But we're, we want all four columns mashed together. So I'm going to use curly bracket. That's a race syntax, 1, 2, 3, 4, because I want to mash all four columns. So in essence, 
with choose, if you give it an array of numbers here, the next four values will all be chosen at the same time, comma. And then the value I want, I want this range right. Oh, let's do the um, sales range first. So right here, I have a value. I did a comma, and that's the first thing that choose is going to choose from. By the way, choose can choose between ranges, single cells, values, text, formulas. I mean, it's just an amazing lookup function. Comma, but the next we're doing ranges here. So the next range I want is this next sales range on sheet two. Now I'm going to comma value three is going to be from week three sheet comma to get that value there, and then I'm going to go to week four. Now there it is, value four. I'm going to close parentheses and I'm going to uh, enter on this other sheet. And now I want to put this back in edit mode and just see what it gives us. I'm going to highlight all this and hit F9. Now what it's doing is, this is array syntax. There's comma, comma, comma. That means go across the columns. But as soon as you see a semicolon, it goes means go down to the next row. So this isn't mashing it up all into a single column, because it would be all semicolons if it was. Down to the next row, down to the next row. So column, 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 down to the next row. Control Z. That's no problem. We can use this, and we're going to have to remember, we have three columns we're looking at. So we're going to have to repeat this. But this little part is going to be the range that we need for the average function. We have two other columns that we have criteria coming from. So I'm going to copy this. Oh, and this is going to be wild. I hope it fits on the screen. Ready? Let's do the average function, just average, not average if. So there's our average. And we want to do the old kind of array formula where we go if. Now, if function, we can put a range right here. And we could say if that first product column has wine in it, then, and we'll have another if that says, if the store column has store one, after the second if, we'll say, then give us all the values. And that will put that into the average with Control Shift Enter. Now, I already have this choose here, and I want the B column. So I'm going to change these all to B. So B's. And I'm going to say if, so. I want to do an approximate match here. Now that, I, I can't say equals and use that um, wildcard syntax. So I'm going to use the search function. And I'm going to search, because search function is programmed to find some text. So I'm going to say find wine, b1, comma. Within, well, we gave it that big little that uh, rectangular range there. So it'll search for those. And if it finds any of them with wine in it, it'll return the position. Now I'm going to come down here and close parentheses on the search. And let's just see what this does. F9. So it gives me a 1, 1, 1, whoop. 1, 1, 1, but a bunch of value errors. And I'm only interested in the ones. Now those ones mean it found wine at the first position. Now there is there are some in there that are not at the first position. But we need to isolate those ones as trues and the values as false. So I'm going to Control Z and put is number. So there's the is number. And I'm just going to keep that search there. Now, check this out. I can go is number, F9. And there's all my trues and falses, Control Z. So now if has a bunch of trues and falses, right? Well, what do I want? I want to, uh, that's the approximate search for wine. Well, there's the logical test, comma, value of true. I don't know what it is yet because I have another condition. So I'm going to have to say if. And I'm going to put the choose. And now this is the C column for the store. So I'm going to change all the Ds to C. And I'm going to say if that's equal to anything in there is equal to store 1. I don't need to do any approximate stuff there. OK, so that's the second test. Comma, well, what if the value of if true that I want to throw into the average function is Control V. That this right here. And this has the D column proper. Those have the values. Oh, I wonder if I could get this on this. There we go. OK, that's much better. All right, so now value of true. I don't need the false, so I'm going to close parentheses on that. I'm to the next if. I'm going to close parentheses on that, because I don't need anything there. Now I f finally see that this whole thing right here, if, 
And then there's one condition, two conditions in the range. That's going to dump some numbers. So when I hit F9, I see a 162, a 29, a 377. So all of the numbers are there. Control Z. I want to close off that bunch of numbers and falses. Control Shift Enter. One hundred eighty-nine dollars and thirty-three cents. All right, that's pretty amazing. Uh, the indirect is totally beautiful and efficient for mashing together columns across multiple sheets. However, it is volatile. One hundred eighty-nine dollars right? and thirty-three cents. And this uh, cool construction here with. Uh, using the choose function, that little piece right there. Totally uh, beautiful for mashing columns together. And then we used it inside of two ifs to dump, then finally, some values into the average. All right, I uh, love hanging out at the Mr. Excel message board. Dominic and Barry Houdini give us some great solutions here. See you next trick.